A furious debate over the biggest personal tax cuts in Australian history has ended with a comfortable government victory in the Senate. After talking about making changes, four crossbenchers sat with the Coalition and gave it everything it wanted in a package to be phased in over seven years. As political editor Andrew Probin reports, the tax cuts might be written into law, but that doesn't mean the argument over them has ended. Today is a great day for hard-working Australian families. Delivering a significant legislative success for Malcolm Turnbull. This is the most comprehensive reform of personal income tax in a generation. Order on my left. Rarely does this Senate fold to the government's will. The Senate should do its job, mate. But with One Nation and the Centre Alliance on side, a job was done on the regular rules of debate. Five minutes on a bill for $144 billion. This is one of the most shameful, disgraceful days that I've seen. And the bill passed into law. The result of the division is eyes 37, noes 33. The matter is resolved in the affirmative. The package will drastically transform a tax system that delivers $240 billion to government coffers every year. Under the current tax regime, 22% pay no more than 19% tax. More than half of the tax-paying population pay 32.5% tax. One in five pay 37% and 5% of workers pay a marginal tax rate of 45%. Without change, more and more workers would be in the top two tax brackets as the number of people drop out of the two lowest tax rates. Under the government's changes, the 37% bracket would eventually go, leaving 94% of workers paying no more than 32.5%. And the top 6% of earners on more than $200,000 would pay 45 cents tax for every dollar above that amount. It's also a plan that gives Australians certainty about what the tax system looks like out into the future. Immediate tax relief is modest, just $10 a week for low and middle income earners, with tax relief for higher incomes not scheduled for another four years. The fiscal recklessness and addiction to unfairness of the Turnbull government is perhaps starker than it's ever been. The scene's now set for a hip pocket election, a contest between rival tax plans. Labor's biggest gamble is promising to repeal tax cuts that target workers on more than $90,000. Malcolm Turnbull's task is to counter Bill Shorten's claim that his plan is unfair and unaffordable. They have yet again sold out working people and prioritised the needs of the most well-off over everyone else. What an abandonment of Australian workers. This has been a week of shame for the Labor Party. A clash that so will have class war overtones. Andrew Proben, ABC News, Canberra. And political editor Andrew Probin joins us now from Canberra. Andrew, this is a win for the government, but Labor's promise to roll half of it back. How will that contest be waged? Well, Matt, I think this is going to be very, very fiercely fought and it will be one of the defining issues of the federal election campaign. Now, Labor is going to f uh, focus on the F word, fairness, and as we've seen all week, the coalition is focusing on aspiration. Labor's rhetorical attack is all about uh, the well-off who would be getting tax cuts under the coalition tax plan, but the political battle will be those earning 90 to 120,000 who would also lose out under Labor's repeal plan. And you would think that uh, whoever wins over those people would have a good chance of winning the next federal election. And the coalition's worked the Senate crossbench to get this set of tax cuts through. Can it do the same with its company tax cuts? Well, with the Senate, who can tell? But on company tax cuts, you would think it's, uh, uh, it's doubtful. Uh, there are indications that the government has once again started negotiations with One Nation, the flip-flopping One Nation. But even if uh, Pauline Hanson and her sole senator do change their mind again on company tax cuts, the government would still need one extra vote. And there's no indication uh, that the, uh, the holdouts have changed their mind. It does appear, however, that the the, uh, the government is prepared to go down on uh, fighting on company tax cuts and have its tactics uh, tested uh, in the by-elections at the end of July, Matt. Andrew Proben, thank you.